What is going on guys, Jin here from Seed Zero Media. In today's episode, I wanted to step back a little bit and look at how far I have come with the 280Z build because I think at this point, I'm at least halfway into the build. So I wanna show you guys what I have done so far, some of the areas I'm not happy with and what I have planned for the future for the car. So let's start with back of the car. But before I do that, check this out. I got brand new L engine. Exploded diagram t-shirt now in stock on caesarmedia.com. So check it out if you want to grab yourself an L engine t-shirt All right, so let's start with the booty of the car. All right, so let's check out with this sexy booty of a car Okay, so we got back here the 240z tail lights, which was pain the ass to install But it came out great. It looks OEM. I'm very happy with the satin black trim I painted. I'm also happy with AutoZone chrome piece I added. I don't see any phase and it looks OEM honestly. It flows very well with the rest of the chrome that's on the car. What I wanted to do with real end next is install carbon fiber BR8 style lip on the back here. So it'll come up to, I don't know, like up to here. Nothing too crazy, right? Just a little lip to add a nice little sexy touch to this booty now i was gonna get this from a company called retrospec and i was also going to install a 240z tail light trim piece that was also made by uh, retrospec which was going to be carbon fiber so the left side centerpiece and the right side was all going to be carbon fiber so i actually ended up ordering these parts from the retrospec i paid for it got the confirmation and it was all good to go but about a week after that, Retrospect's shop went up in flames along with all the material that was inside, along with all the finished goods inside. So um, as far as I know for now, the tail light carbon fiber piece as well as the lip and the, and the uh, fender flares that's all carbon fiber is on hold. And I really have no idea when Retrospect's shop is going to be up and running again. And I really, really hope he does get back up and running because I wanted to run his parts. So Paul from Retrospect, I don't know you, never met you, but if you're watching this, I am praying along with, I'm sure, a lot of other S30 owners that uh, you come back stronger than ever before. And best of luck to rebuilding the shop and getting back in the business because I'm sure you will. So this whole rear end right now is on hold for that reason. Um, antenna I chopped off. I really don't know what I want to do with this. Part of me wants to run the motorized antenna that goes up and down automatically. I think that would be super cool to see. I don't really know how hard it is to install. So if any of you have experience installing the motorized ones that automatically go up and down, please let me know. Some of the questions I had was how does the antenna know to go up and down? Is it like a relay system where you got the constant 12 volt coming from the battery pack and another 12 volt coming from the ignition? So if you cut the key, um, the antenna would fall back down. Does that drain the battery power? If you have experience with motorized antennas on these cars, please let me know. Now coming to the side, this is where I think I f up honestly. Um, when I installed these fender flares, I didn't have the wheel yet. I know in the YouTube videos it looked like I had a wheel already, but I didn't. Well, I ended up cutting this up before my wheel arrived, and I basically just matched the fender flare to where this body line ends, and then kept that going horizontally across and flush this out to the back of the body panel but what ended up happening was i have this gap in the back more so than i did up front so the wheel looks like it's more forward and one of the reasons why i wanted to run retro specs carbon fiber fender flare is for one it looks awesome and it's gonna go well with the real end of the car but for two because i really wanted to redo this i feel like i messed this up in terms of attachment points i really want to push this forward but with this no brand fender flares i have on the car right now if i push it forward this lip is just going to come in too far it's not going to match the body line anymore and the front side is also going to show paint it's going to show the orange on the inside and i really don't want to do that now i have the rear indicator as well as the front indicator. And I was actually going to block these off with the block of plate I ordered from Skillet so that it's going to be nice and flush and no indicators at all. But uh, now that I'm looking at the car, 
I feel like I should retain the indicators to keep that retro look, especially with the fender mirrors on the car now. I'm still going back and forth debating whether I want to delete that or not. Now coming to the inside of the car, here's another mistake I want to show you. So when I bought the $100 eBay seats, which by the way, as soon as I posted that video and posted that link to the seats, the seller on eBay increased the price up to like $175 per seat from $100. So I'm sure he was making good money from free advertisement from my YouTube channel. So this $175 seat now, I put into the car as a temporary solution, right? To lighten up the chassis by swapping out the stock ones and to kind of go with that retro sporty look that I was going for. And I knew the quality was going to be crap. I knew it wasn't going to be safe and I knew it wasn't going to last. And look what happened after just about a month of using it. You can tell here, the bottoms are missing, right? So this is the one that just came off today from here. What ended up happening was my jeans had pockets in the back, obviously, and these pockets kept getting cut into the the grooves of these buttons, and it would every time I come out of the seat, it would grab onto my pocket and pull off slowly, and eventually, it came off. So I have one missing from here. I have one missing from here. To be honest, I'm still very happy with the seat for the price I paid for. And uh, missing tabs here and there don't really bother me. But with the seat now costing $175 as opposed to $100 I paid for it, with this poor quality of a seat, uh, it's debatable whether you want to save up to buy a legit JDM seat for like $800 or you want to spend $175 to buy a seat that you're going to replace in uh, a month or two. To me, I don't really care that the eBay seat's falling apart. It's just what I expected anyways in the beginning before I even purchased the thing. It's a temporary solution on a permanent car. So, you know, eventually I want to put in legit JDM seats, whether it's $800 or $1,000 or go with like a legit sports seat. Especially if I ended up swapping the engine or making more power out of this L28, maybe go with like a 3.1 liter diesel crank. That's the coming in the future, right? Because I wanna have more safety while driving this car. Not much a chance inside the vehicle. I do have this NRG steering wheel with the Datsun logo I bought on eBay for like five bucks. I got here custom engraved Caesar wooden shift knob from Phoenix shift knobs. Thanks guys from Phoenix shift knobs for uh, creating such a beautiful piece. They even match the color of my steering wheel with the shift knob. So that came out awesome. Um, I got here my JDM Omamori, JDM stickers here and there. But other than that, interior is pretty much stock for now. I did want to run carbon fiber uh, center console from Retrospec and do something about the dash and also run carbon fiber apillars. But again, with Retrospec being out of business temporary, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. So for now, I'm just going to keep the interior as is. Coming over to the side, I removed the 280Z emblem because I just didn't like this and uh, noticed that there are three holes in here one two three that the emblem was clipped in with and uh, when i saw that i had already purchased this fair lady z emblem that i was going to install on the back of the lip right here but when i saw these three holes in the fender i was like does it fit perfectly with the fair lady z logo and it actually does so what I think I'm going to do now is get another one of these and put it on the passenger side. So I got um, Fair Lady Z logo on the side, both on the driver side and passenger side. Initially, I was going to go badge less because I like debadging all my toys. But uh, once I took the badge off, it kind of looked weird. Now coming to the front, I got the fender mirrors, which I absolutely love. I love the look. I'm so happy I installed it. And actually, I've been enjoying the functionality of it. When I adjusted it correctly, I am definitely able to use this as a door mirror replacement. Um, yes, it is small. Yes, it is kind of far in the distance and it takes a while to get used to. But to me, that's just part of the experience of owning a Z car. And I've been enjoying 
every minute of it. I even got myself a concave mirror attachment that I can put on here in case um, I wanted to go more wide angle, but I haven't really had the need to do that yet. Surprisingly, for the front end with bigger diameter and bigger width tires, does not rub against the stock fenders. Yes, there is massive wheel gap here still, but uh, no matter how hard I take it in the corners, I'm still not rubbing. So I haven't had the need to cut this up yet. I do need to cut it up in the future once I go coilovers because I'm still waiting on the coilovers. Once I install that, the car is going to be slightly lower, I think. And uh, obviously I don't want to be running fender flares in the back and not in the front. So I want to match that look front and back but for now no fender flares and uh, before I install the fender flares I'm gonna finish up the front bumper so that I can identify how high I should install these flares to make sure the car doesn't look messed up like it is in the rear right now I have the headlight covers that needs to be installed so there will be video on that I think that makes the car look more aerodynamic more modern more JDM over here, by the way, I have a lower control arm by the guys from Techno Toy Tuning. This one is going to be mounted on the rear. I'll be doing a video on that, of course. Here, I got the massive grill by Skiller that I made a custom bracket for on the side. Looks great, works great, no complaints here. Now, I don't know if you can see that because it's quite dark, but I do have the, um, the tension rods and lower control arms that I installed by uh, Silver My Motors. And these control arms and tension rods has been amazing. When I initially installed these fatter tires up front, especially with the car having no power steering, I thought it was going to be super heavy. By installing the control arms and tension rods, it gives me the possibility to adjust caster on the car. So I have a, I'm probably running like insane caster right now but let me just tell you the responsiveness of steering has doubled in speed like i have no problem steering this thing around even with these fatter tires everything feels lighter and quicker with this setup now i'm sure my alignment's all messed up because i haven't taken to the alignment shop because i want to do that after i install the lower control arms in the back as well as coil rovers and over here i have a radiator by mishimoto that should be just a stock replacement that's going to be fitted here for additional cooling another idea i had in my mind was running like a concealed led amber turn signal setup inside of the grill so i'm going to keep the grill the way it is but when I need to use my turn signals, it will kind of pop up. So it will be a concealed hitting setup. And instead of running the 240Z bumper that had a turn signal in it, I might just go back to 280Z bumper with no turn signal so I can run that concealed setup. I'm still thinking about it. But that is about what I have done so far to the Z. Let me know what you think about the modification I have done to the car what you think about the modification i'm gonna do to the car and if you have any suggestions on what else i should do to the car please let me know please leave it in the comment section below so i can take a look at it obviously i want to make more power out of the l28 engine before i do anything stupid like swap it with the rb engine or vq engine i want to crank out as much power as possible out of this l28 platform and see what its capabilities are uh, and let me know if you have any tips and tricks to make the interior better, cooler, more comfortable, whatever, because uh, I'm certainly lacking in the interior side of things. So that is it for today, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the update video. It has come a long way, but it still has a long way to go. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feedbacks, please leave it in the comment section below and hit the like button if you like the video. And I'll see you in the next episode.